Normally, when we move an object in our scene, we can drag it smoothly across our scene to any position we wish in 3D space. However, with snapping activated it acts a bit like magnetic attraction, forcing a moving object to jump to a specific nearby location. That location might be a position in empty 3D space or some element such as a vertex or edge of another object. We have already come across Blender's snapping tool when we looked at positioning the 3D cursor in a previous video, but snapping can also be used when moving, rotating and scaling objects. Snapping can be switched on by clicking on the snapping icon at the top of the 3D viewport. The icon will turn blue to show that it's now active. Clicking the icon for a second time will switch snapping off. An alternative method of toggling snapping on and off is to use the keyboard shortcut shift tab. If we want snapping to activate only for the current command, then, with the snapping icon deactivated, we can hold down the control key during the operation. If snapping is already activated, then holding down the control key will switch it off for the current operation. When we switch snapping on using its default settings, movement is in discrete steps in each dimension it is being moved along. We'll start by looking at the options shown in the drop-down panel associated with snapping. At the very bottom of the panel is the affect settings. This control which operations will use snapping. By default, only moving uses snapping, but by clicking on the rotate and scale buttons will activate snapping for those operations. Selecting one of these buttons turns it blue to show snapping is active for that operation. Clicking on an already blue button will deactivate that option. For the moment we'll stick to the move option only. The snap to options, as the name suggests, determine what the moving object will snap to. By default this is set to increment. This normally forces the object to move in discrete steps. For example, here we are looking at a plain mesh from top view. If we switch on snapping, and press G to initiate a move, we can see that the plane's location jumps in steps of 1 meter in the global X and Y directions. Since the Z axis is pointing out of the screen, there is no movement in that direction. However, we should also notice that if we start with the plane moved away from an intersection of the grid, the object remains offset from an intersection. If we want the moves to always position us at an intersection, then we need to check the absolute grid snap box. Also, if we zoom in, so that the 10 cm grid becomes visible, then the movements reduce to steps of 10 cm. Hold down the shift key during the move and the step size will reduce to 1 cm when using the smaller grid size, and 10 cm when using the larger grid size. To demonstrate the other snapping options, which all involve attaching one object to another, we'll make use of a cube and a cone, with the cone reduced to three sides thereby turning it into a pyramid. With Snap 2, still set to increment, we'll select the pyramid and press G to start it moving. But now we'll press the B key. This causes the pyramid to stop moving with the mouse pointer. Instead, we get different symbols as we move the pointer over vertices, edges, edge centers and faces of the pyramid. Blender is allowing us to choose an element on the selected object that we want to connect to the target object. If we can't see the point we want to select from our current viewpoint, then we can hold down the Alt key and drag with the middle mouse button to orbit. Holding down Alt and Shift while dragging with the middle mouse button will pan the view. Once we press the left mouse button to make our element selection, moving the mouse pointer also moves the selected object and leaves behind a copy of the symbol used by our selected point on the pyramid. Now as we move the mouse pointer over the cube, we see the same symbols as before on the cube. 
these represent the position on the cube where our pyramid is to snap to. Once we've pressed the left mouse button to select a location, the two selected points will snap together. Use of the B key when snapping is a relatively new option in Blender, and for many situations, makes several of the other snapping options redundant. However, for completeness, we'll look at all of the other options offered for this operation. Snap to Vertex, snaps the moving object to a vertex of the target object. Without use of the B key, exactly which part of the moving object snaps to the target can be unpredictable. As we can see here, To fully understand what's going on here, we need to recall the idea of a bounding box. We mentioned it in the previous Origins video. A bounding box is the smallest box shape we can create that surrounds an object. So let's see the bounding box of our pyramid. Now let's drag our pyramid onto the cube again. As we can see, it's the nearest corner of the bounding box that snaps to our selected vertex on the cube and not part of the pyramid. If we use the B key with a snap to vertex selected, notice that we can only select vertices on the object being moved and on the target object. But now it's a vertex of the pyramid that attaches to the cube and not one from its bounding box. For the moment we'll ignore the other snap to options and look at the snap with choices. This setting determines which part of the moving object snaps to the target object. As we saw in the previous example, the default closest option is not very useful. The next option, Center, snaps the moving object's origin to the target point. Of course, if the origin has been moved away from the center of the moving object, the mesh being moved can end the operation still at some distance from the target. Snap with median is only useful when more than one object is being moved. We'll add a UV sphere and snap it in the pyramid to a vertex of the cube. As we can see it's the midpoint between the sphere and pyramid's origins that is positioned by the cube's vertex. Snap with active snaps the origin of the active object to the target element. We can get rid of the UV sphere now and go back to moving only the pyramid. We'll also return snap with the closest. We'll look at the rest of the snapping options in the next video. There you'll find out, amongst other things, exactly what snap peel object means and how important the A key is to snapping. And don't forget to download the PDF pages that accompany this video from our Digital Skills website.